episode number 11. I am your co-host, Mr. Jay Reason, and I am here with the one and the only, Lord Ezak. What's up, everyone? Danny Zabo in the full effect. Lord Ezak, call me what you want to call me, Danny Singer. Dan, Dan, also known on Cameo across the board, right, E? Yes. Let's talk. I mean, how have you been this week? Uh, Since thank, our last episode, people were really well, the, last, the last episode. I just want to say uh, was really great. We had Scott Vogel and Dante Ross on. Everybody, amazing. thank you. Yeah, both thank you guys. to both of them, uh, dude. Them. I don't know about you, E, but I got a ton of positive reaction from yeah. Vogel's re- uh, interview and Dante. So I just want to thank them and thank everybody who keeps listening to the show and supporting us. It is fucking awesome. Uh, e, Zach, and I are uh, very excited. So, E. Um, since last time, though, this is kind of cool. You, you, we just launched your cameo, and yes. dude, since then you're like, it's killing it, like, right? It's it, it's so insane. Um, I've been two weeks and fucking every day, except for one day, like, but every twenty four, every twenty four hours, I, I have at least two, three cameos, and and it's so cool to even be recognized by people, you know, that peers and everything that I, like this is for celebrities. I'm yeah. like, what the fuck? I'm, uh, this is for celebrities, <laughs> and I don't even have my—I don't even have my own bank account. Right. <laughs> I'm like, that's how crazy the world is. But I'm so happy, and I know that uh, the people for Cameo, uh, uh, Brendan, Brendan. Yep, that's our boy. Shout out. Thank, thank, thank you so much, bro. Like this, this is something that I, uh, Jay. Thank you so much for, yeah, for man, getting this course. for me. I'm like, this is so cool. People are saying some crazy stuff. Well, yo, but, it's, but, I mean, no, it's been really nice. It's not like. Um, it's not like people say some horrible stuff. Or they make, no, say it's, all, like, it's like, uh, it's funny it's too. It's funny, funny, funny stuff. And yeah, I love it, man. I, I, I go it. in and kind of check in on them because you can watch Oh, you them. heard, you heard the, the Cleveland one, right? Oh, uh, dude, I, I was cracking up at that one. and uh, Yeah, it's cool. It, they're just all funny. That's so like, cool. if, if anybody hasn't caught Isaac yet on uh, on Cameo, uh, again, you're going to probably see it on your screen here. But uh, you're going to want to go ahead and check that out. It's, it's hilarious. Definitely worth it if you need your band plugged or anything. Uh, Isaac's doing all that Yeah, shit. your band plugged or like a mixtape or something like that. Yo, that's a dope hat. Where did you... That's a new... That's a new hat? Is that a new new Oh, hat? shit. Let me see that one. Oh. That's sick. Green. This I never saw... A new, um, that's a new one. I never the saw New York, one. The New York Hardcore Streetwear camo and green hat. You can get that at Generation Records in New York City. That's sick. Uh, Shout out, Mark. Or go on... Shout out, yeah, shout out uh, Mark. Bro. I love you, Mark. Uh, all the guys out there, all generation. Yeah, all everybody at Generation oh, is cool as fuck. Nice guys. Oh, check this out, but check this out. Get this online at www.generationrecords.bigcartel.com. <laughs> and you'll see that on your screen too. Yeah, that that hat's dope, man. We're gonna um. Yeah, I like that colorway. That's- Dope, dope. I didn't mean to interrupt you, but I just noticed that you were wearing it. It was pretty good. Pretty good. It's, it's, thank you so much. Mad fly. All my all my stuff is fly. Um, sad note though, too. Right since we last recorded. Go ahead, Riley. Yep. Rest Power in peace. Trip. Uh, probably you guys, everybody who listens to our show probably already knows that by now. But um, if you hadn't, the unfortunate yeah. passing of Riley was super sad, man. I mean, I, I didn't know him personally, but had a lot of friends who interacted <laughs> with him in and watching their grieving was really hard so i can only imagine how uh rough it must be for somebody who knew him uh the guy yeah. seems like he was he affected everybody on on a very positive level so great. um yeah shout out i mean that's a fucking horrible Riley, band great peace. band yeah rest in rest in power uh, too young too young too young uh life is crazy uh the dude was every time i saw the dude he was, he was full of life and cool guy respectful and we always like, hey, I'm like, and always, and people on Twitter all the time. We used to speak all the time, talking mad shit together. Well, I was gonna, always, you, guys go, like, you guys will go, you guys will go down, oh, in, yeah. you guys <laughs> will go down in history with him and you as, uh, as uh, uh, fighting with trapped. I, you know, so funny. I totally even <laughs> forgot about that. I used to talk to him all the time about uh, Scarhead and Power Trips going to tour. He's like, yes, let's do this. Yeah, he loved Scarhead. And I was like, Power Trip is hard, man. Like, Power Trip was, like, is fucking great. I, I feel like I mean, they they were gonna be the next like big. Pantera, you know, to like. Yeah, they were like, like they were on their way, man. Like them and Municipal Waste d- did it the right way. Yep. You know what I mean, mm-hmm. so but but that, I, I yeah, you know, I tell you right now, it's just sad with someone from our scene. Yeah. Uh, Especially somebody who's a good person, and you see that they yeah, affected somebody. That's you know that that's you see sucks. that they affected people on every level, positive. You know, whereas like. 
some of our friends I won't name. It's like some people are very sad about it, and other people are like, oh, thank God that person's gone. You know what I mean? Like, it's yeah, like- <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, it's like, it's like, like it's, it's always the good people that the, the guys who are doing, are doing good in life. His band, his music reached thousands. Yeah. Thousands. Maybe a million. More millions. No, they were fucking huge, man. So- and they, they, they sold records and they, they played and they crossed over from metal, hardcore punk. And they, they always, they, like I said, man, they always kept it real. Um, I didn't, I didn't know him personally, but again, yeah. seeing the interaction he had with people I'm friends with, um, I, I felt, I felt it for everybody, man. So, uh, you know, just want to give a quick section of the show yeah. to, uh, to acknowledge that and say that, uh, E, what else you've been working on this week, man? What's, what else is cracking before we, we got a really good show today, but uh, what, what do you, what do you been, what do you been working on listening? Anything? All right. Got, so basically, uh, basically, uh, basically, uh, Last time I went out to Milwaukee and I finished the Street CD volume number three. Sick. Do um, we know when that's coming out yet or no? Probably in two months. Okay. Yeah, two, 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 two months. And uh, TJ Kaz, uh, uh was the host. But I did a, a video which came out. The video is called Cyclone. Uh, I saw uh, that. Cy- video is great. Yeah. Cyclone featuring DJ Kaz on the hook and featuring my beautiful wifey Storm. Shout out Storm, the best. Storm has also been helping you and I out with uh, with yeah. your cameo, so I just want a, a big shout out to Storm for helping me. Uh, and, and, this, and this video is so good, dope. The DRP uh, directed it. Uh, Storm looks amazing in it. So that's all she's. I, <laughs> I wish I, I wish I had. I, you know how I used to watch the Nuclear Assault video with yep. uh, uh, Jessica, Jessica, whatever her name was, yep. lady in it. That's how a little kid, thirteen year olds go look at my my girl my my girlfriend. Like, That's great. You know, see, like how weird that is. Like how weird. That, like when we're little and we watch all these videos with like a hot girl in it. Like, that's oh, your, yeah, that's girl. her. That's- that's 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 how she's a hot girl in the video. Now. I love it. Man. <laughs> that's awesome. What else, what else you been working on? Oh, I've been working. That's it. I'm uh, I Scarhead signed with uh. Yeah, we mentioned that. Records. Yeah, we mentioned that on the last show. So that's really exciting. And, and uh, I, 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 I want to say something that uh, see this. Oh yeah, what is that? That that's called a book, Jameson. <laughs> 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 you open it up and you read it. Wow, so check out, I haven't look. seen one of those so, in years. <laughs> <laughs> so this book right here was given to me by a friend of mine I grew up with in Queens. Dope. Uh, it's called Heal Profoundly. Nice. Heal Heal Profoundly. Uh, a graffiti thug's transformation to holistic doctor. Like one of my friends I grew up with. This right graffiti with my boy Greed KAC, um, one of the best graffiti writers to come out of Queens, a player in the world. You know what I mean I'm saying just, just, just saying that when I I went to I went to West Coast and I, I he came out and visited me and I introduced him to um, Revoke and he's with Risky and Revoke went oh my God you are Greed and, and Risky's like well, what's up he goes it wasn't for this guy's style I would never have been never got I took That's my style cool. from. And I was like, and Risky was so mad that, uh, like, he got his style from a New Yorker. I was like, see? <laughs> from Queens, nigga. So, so look, look, it said, says, by doctor, he's a doctor. That's crazy. By doctor Robert, Robert Cyprian. So, this book he wrote to me, to Lord Easy, uh, a.k.a. Danny Diablo, Greed. Look at that. Ah, yeah. yeah. Shout out. Where can, Shout uh, is that available? Like, what's he got a website for that? We'll have to plug that for sure. I, 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 I'll, I'll figure it out. Yeah. I, 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 we'll put it up. But he's, when you're uh, watching he's this, you'll see. I'll have a link for you guys to check the check the book out for sure. He's a, he's a, he went to school. and everything. He's a doctor in holistic medicine and a chiropractor. That's sick. Green one, KC. Thank you for the book. I can't wait to fucking read this thing. And that I, I'm, oh, I'm so happy that this part, someone from Queens is putting out a book that's very positive. You know, change your life around, and he did. And look, that's how what hard work does. You know, he became a doctor. That's sick, awesome, man. Yeah, I have to, I have to get a cop. I have to borrow that one when you're done with it. Um, yo, so I've, I've had a, a, cr- a crazy busy week. I'm gonna share here on the show two, two new uh, things on. Uh, for people who don't know, I do a, li- I do a couple different labels. Uh, one of them is yes. called War God, which is, you know, basically focused on reissue. But I also do a newer label I started last year called Static Era Records. You've heard me plug it here. Um, yes. So we just finished a session for Cruel Hand, who you guys, everybody knows, uh, with Zeus. It was awesome. Oh, yeah, this oh. shit is heavy. We did three songs. Um, I mean, yo, fans of Cruel Hand are going to be fucking excited. Zeus kept them heavy as fuck. So I got to hang Good. out with those guys. This shit is, is awesome. 
How's well, Zeus doing? He's great, man. Zeus is awesome. He's the man. We, shout out to Zeus. I shout love out you, Zeus. Zeus. He said to say what's up. We were talking. We, we, were, talking about, we, were, we were just we were having a good time. Uh, it was it me. It was me, him, Wayne from Hate Breed, and the cool oh, hand shout guys. Out to Wayne. Shout out That's Wayne. That's my boy. Uh, just out. Ice every, pick Wayne. Yes. Yeah, out every night this weekend, man. I I don't think I've gone out that much. Uh, and again, I don't want to sound like I'm going out in the pandemic. About everybody was socially distanced, masked the whole the whole night. But uh, you know, I went out every yeah, night, right. <laughs> uh, and, and we were having a good time. Uh, and then I also want to share here on the show. Um, I just announced it today, but I signed a band from uh, Texas called Teardrop. It's uh, ex members of Bitter End. This shit is heavy All as right. fuck. Um, so we just premiered their new single today, Forever Scarred, on MetalInjection.com. So if you're fans yeah. of like super heavy hardcore, uh, you're going to want to check that out. We got the EP. It's a three-song EP I'm releasing, and that's going to be out on the 25th of this month. So I'm going to have uh, all the Yo. information there. So I just want to plug a couple of things there before we jump into Yo. the show. Yo, so E, we got, we got a really good show for you today. Oh, great. We got a great show for the fans today. So I'm going to bring our first guest on. Yeah. Uh, it's going to be my boy. Uh, you actually, I think you know him too. Uh, my boy Aram who used to play guitar in Champion. He played in Betrayed. He plays in a new band called Change. He's also uh, a life coach, kind of. He's got a lot of shit going one. on with his uh, cadence leadership. So I'm going to grab him on. So hang on one second while I... Yo, you're you're my life coach. You're my life coach. Dude, you're my life coach. All right, guys, and we're back. With, uh, Corona Chronicles number 11. I'm really, really excited to have our first guest of the night. It's one of my oldest friends in the uh, scene. We met uh, on Bridge Nine Days. Um, you guys will probably remember him from his band's champion, Betrayed. He ran a label called React. He has a new band called Change, which we're going to talk about. He does some, a lot of cool shit. Everybody, please welcome my boy, Aram Arslian. Did I say that right or did I butcher it? Arslanian. Did I get it right? That was, that was perfect. Okay, that was perfect. exactly it. I was going to say Aram from Champion, but that's not really the case. Aram from Betrayed or Aram from Change is not the same. So, Aram. Thank you so much for joining us, dude. I'm very excited to have you on with, uh, with me and Isaac. Uh, we've been talking about getting you on for a minute, so this worked out really well. <laughs> okay. Can I ask a question to start? Oh, of course. Oh, okay. <laughs> this is going right. to be good already. Isaac, Yo, what's Isaac up? Not, never, we've never met before, but I am so psyched that we get to hang out, man. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> me too, brother. Me too. Are you ready? Thank you. Thank you. I've been thinking about questions for you all day. <laughs> <laughs> So first question is just pure curiosity. All right. Why only the one record on EVR? Why did you go to another planet for the uh, for the full length? Oh, interesting. So, uh, check this, uh, this is crazy. Check this out. Uh, basically, well, he's speaking about Crown of Thorns, uh, Train Your Blues, basically, was a, that was a demo for Blackout, Blackout Records. Mm. So, and all of a sudden... Um, EBR Franklin was um, now Krishna, and he was good friends with Steve Reddy. And was always in at the temple. He was like, he showed uh, Steve. He's like, no, we'll take you. So he bought the the demo. He paid the money back to Blackout, and we went to, um, you know, EBR. Then so why, why yeah. the only record on that one? So, because, I don't know because you know, Franklin was dealing with Shelter, and I guess some like he like like, <laughs> like some business stuff. Then all of a sudden, we went. To um, another planet, because Fred Feldman was co- uh, Fred up, Feldman was cool with me. You know what I mean so it was more because Steve Ray, Steve Ray is cool, but I like doing like Fred Feldman's like well more money to record and all that stuff like that. And uh, back then I, I didn't know anything about the music business. <laughs> and uh, and the reason why we got to we got Fred Feldman is because one of my friends worked in the mail room <laughs> for profile. <laughs> So 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 one day Fred Feldman was like, "Yo, there's this band called Crowd Thorns, and they're big." You, and, and my boy's like, "Yo, that's my fucking boy." He's like, "No, is not He goes, "Tell him." So he called my mom's house, and I pick up the phone. He goes, "Yo, the profile wants to come meet." Him. I was like, "Get the fuck out of here!" Man. I didn't believe it. My boy works in the mail room. You know what I mean? And then I was like, "My boy Nick Packenine. He lives in Florida. Shout out to Nick Packenine." So I went there, and Fred Feldman and I became friends. And and now Fred Feldman. Son and his friends all have a label. It's crazy. It's like it's it's, it's so crazy. My life is crazy, right. but yeah. When you switched, was yeah. EVR bummed or were they supportive, or did they not care? Um, I, I later on in life, I did a, my all my merch for EVR. Mm. 
So I'm always Steve Reddy has always been my boy. He like he we respect each other and we've always been cool. So like it was it's like I always looked at him like everyone looked at Steve Reddy like uh a nice, quiet, simple, <laughs> nice guy. I know the real Steve Reddy. So. <laughs> <laughs> I love you, Steve Reddy. But that's all I'm saying. Like, Steve Reddy is, 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 uh, is a hardcore guy. So, Steve Reddy, I always have mad love for yeah, Steve, Steve is cool and Steve Reddy. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Steve yeah. Reddy is, is awesome. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Ready for my next question. <laughs> yeah. Do you feel, in like all honesty, do you yeah. feel... Crown of Thorns got its due. Ooh, Ooh. that's an interesting question. Oh, that, that, that's well. I'm gonna tell, oh my gosh, this guy, this is so crazy. I, 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 this is so <laughs> crazy because people. All right, check this out. As a music, I can't say as a person, personal wise. <laughs> mm-hmm. n- no, we, we were off a whole year because Mike Desjardins left us, and, and and it was. So we even sound like a dick now to Mike Desjardins. So, but Percy, how as well? We when he left a, a whole year, we didn't really do shit. Then we went out, and I was like, yo, we're touring, bro. And we I put the band back there. Then we toured, like, for two, three, two, three years straight. It was just crowned for two years. Like, boom, boom, boom. Um, I thought that people uh, didn't give us a chance because who, uh, who I personally was uh, uh, affiliated with. So they mm-hmm. thought we sounded like a, like a, I can't say the words anymore. I can't say, like, 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 like you know, the, the Neanderthals are fucking hardcore. So like like uh, beat, beat down music. So so people thought that my music was gonna be exactly like Mad Ball Bulldoze. You know what I mean? Right. So right. And, and, and so basically we I, we sounded more like like Rush. You know what I mean? You know I mean? Like it was like more uh, soul. You know what I mean? So but yeah, no, we never got to do. I thought that if I would if if we would have got a record with a real producer and a real a budget. And, and and put something out now, it, it would be beyond fantastic. And I thought that a lot of people always put us like, uh, like we're we're an a band, but people always put us behind other bands because we I don't know. It's like I, I thought that we were, we're before our time. Right? Okay, Crown of Thorns, from my opinion, and Jay, I'm real interested in your opinion. They like mentally fi- mentally vexed is a perfect record. That's I love a- mentally. Yeah, that's a good record. Yeah. Thank you, thank you. Band that people like to talk about liking. Yes. But how many people are like bringing Crown of Thorns out to a show or going to a Crown of Thorns show? Right? No, no. It's, it, I, I played, I, I played, a, say a few years ago with uh, with Sif in, yeah. in in Manhattan, and it, it was the worst <laughs> show. I, went, I looked at Sif. I was like, "What the fuck are you doing to us, bro?" You know, because we grew up together. I was like, "You was like, we went on like six thirty. I was like, "Are you fucking serious?" It was like us. And like I forgot who else it was, but it was so whack. But I couldn't stop laughing. I had to go straight from work. My work clothes. It was that's how whack it was. Dude. I was like, if the world has to know how whack I am, I work a regular fucking construction job. And I, you mean it, it was like a Toby Morris show. The lights were on. I was like, yo, turn the fucking lights off. At least. <laughs> so, but the, the thing is. It, no, people they do, they always do that. It's like uh, like when we played at our uh, at a at a peak, people were scared. It, like it wasn't because it was just, it was more they were scared what's going to happen after the show. <laughs> you know I mean? So, but I, but I understand now. I understand, it's especially when you have kids and stuff. Like I don't want my kid going to fucking to, to like Beirut. You know what I mean? <laughs> you, know what yeah. fucking, you know what I mean? Like go watch go you know, watch Disney or something. You know, yeah. go, 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 you know it's, it's, which is could be even crazier. <laughs> Mentally vexed though, like Train Yard Blues. Mentally vexed is like yeah. classic records, but mentally vexed is like a kind of like a fully formed record, front to back. It looks cool, it sounds cool, the songs are cool, everything's about it. Cool. All right, if you had to <laughs> die in the pit, oh my god, <laughs> Crown of Thorns song, like you you were moshed or got oh. moshed so hard. <laughs> <laughs> Which song? Which kind of Thorn yeah. song would would you die in the pit to? That's a good question. Yo, it, 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 it's probably the song. What's that song? Uh, the song that the the song that the, the, I really we don't play you play play live, but it's something when I something about the, when I wrote the song. I don't even know the song's name. Uh, Love and pain goes together like a needle and thread, right? Uh, mm, mm, mm. I'm just drifting like a shooting star. That song. Okay. I don't know what the name of the song, but you know what I'm saying. 
that song but said, at the end at the end I sing the part you let go like that song but I had to sing that part it made me do it three times I never even <laughs> like before Crown Thoughts I never sang for a band I never sang you know I mean? so it's like but that song really it, when I wrote that song the lyrics really hit my heart you know what I mean like, like a lot of messed up stuff was happening in my life at that time that's why the music is like that you know what I mean so when you sing high, it's cool yeah. because you sound real vulnerable because like it's not a natural place for a voice to go, so no. it sounds sick. It's very it real, awesome. yeah. Thank All you. Right, so, that's, that's crazy. Thank you so much. That means a lot to me. Yeah, man. no, I was. Thank I, you. Listen, this is why I was excited to get you guys together because I, like, again, I mean, I've known me and E, Danny go back a hot, fucking forever. Oh, and can I, I say what? Can yeah, I say yeah, one thing? Of course, go ahead. Yeah. You know who was supposed? To, Walter from Quicksand was supposed to produce Mentally Vex. Ah, oh, no way. That <laughs> sick. Yo, and, and, and we had a big argument, me and Mike John. He was like, no, AJ Novello. <laughs> I was like, oh, which, is, which came out amazing. But imagine if Walter worked with me and oh. my vocals and every harmonizing, background vocals. Just think about that it. That shit would have been crazy, man. That's all, just, that's all I have to say. All right. So all right, I'm, Jason, I'm really glad to get me, you guys together. <laughs> so I was really Hold glad. Hold on a second. I got to ask you. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> I got to ask you a so you and me are standing at the side of the pit together, and you look at me and you say, like the song hits, and you're just like, Ram, it was nice knowing you. I'm about to go get moshed to death. <laughs> and we just shake hands. Which, which song is it? Juggernaut, I would have to think, probably. <laughs> <laughs> For real? Did you get that? a harder intro than that, man? There there my, that's my design. That's all my design. The Juggernaut is, a, is like... Hard and, and, and my life was so going so the lyrics of the song is about the K Mark about the juggernaut, the yeah. comic. So yeah. I was like, such a hard tone, but such, such is like from a little kid's point of view. Think about it. I was like, all right, let me write about the juggernaut. It was, it's it was sick, really though. Weird. That, but I think that's what makes it so hard because it's like it is so innocent, like you know what I mean, like the whole thing, and like. Uh, like even like Rama was saying, like leaving your vocals to get in a range that you're not, you know, leaves you more vulnerable and stuff. It's like, cool. I think that's what makes those records real and, and why those records are special, you know? Um, so I just, um, again, man, really excited that we got to get everybody on and I'm glad that we got this interview started off. Yeah, that, was, that was crazy. That was really good. I got so, interviewed. I got interviewed. Yeah, I love that. <laughs> um, so I did, um, I wanted to talk quickly before we get too much into the music thing with um, Aram has a new band, but I want to talk first, um, Aram, tell our listeners who aren't familiar uh, with what you've done since music, with what you're doing now, specifically with your cadence leadership thing. I mean, as um, a friend of yours from the outside watching you evolve from hardcore guy into this has been awesome. I, I can't compliment you enough. I know I've sent you a bunch of messages on how great it is to hear you talk about that things, um, how many things I identify uh, with what you say. Uh, especially for somebody who, you know, like myself works with clients up front and I feel a lot of the ways you do with that anger inside of like, you know, I know everything, but then having to take the step back. And um, so it was really cool, man, again, to watching a friend of mine evolve to something like that and hope that one day listening to uh, your advice that I will hopefully get to that level. So for people who aren't familiar uh, and for Isaac, just give us a little bit, uh, a little journey of what, where you were at with, you know, playing the guitar, the band's ending and, and sort of your new spot. Yeah, uh, and thanks, man. Thanks for those uh, those words. So when I was playing in in hardcore bands, I was kind of in a good spot because I'd already finished um, uh, university. So like my main bands happened after I already had like uh, like a degree, and so I wasn't I wasn't worried about like oh my gosh, like if this doesn't work out, what's going to happen? Because oh, yeah, so before, yeah, like before my bands had even like gone off and like toured a lot, I'd already had like a career, like a proper career. So I was uh, an addiction mental health therapist and so I worked a lot with like street gangs I worked with uh, youth street and trench youth and so I did that for a while and then I went off and played in, in a bunch of bands and then when I came back a few years later uh, I kept doing that and I moved up like I did I started as um, youth addictions and then I went into like clinical counseling so something that was like a little bit more oh, specific cool. to uh, the psychology of it so I did that for about a decade and it was cool it was like awesome really 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 good job and at one point, I just got burnt out because, like, you know, people dying, like, really, there's no end to to people struggling, right? The right. cycle, cycle keeps going, no matter, no matter what, right. it's crazy. So I hit a point where I was getting, like, a little burnt out, and I tried my hand at what's called executive coaching. So uh, you go in and you work with, like, CEOs of companies, and um, you train them on how to be a good leader, how to speak well. And I started uh -huh. working 
Are, are they are they are they worse than the gang members or just, <laughs> who's better? <laughs> For, for reals, like some of them are like the greatest people, and some yeah. of them are like on Crazy. TV. What you'd think from TV, like oh, damn, and I know some cutthroat, right? Just like cutthroat, yeah. both yeah. sides. Yeah. It's it's wild. So I I started doing that, and I worked for this company for about five years, but it was like horrible. It wasn't horrible, but the guy who owned the company had gotten it from his mom, and he was just this through and through rich kid, like uh. super rich, and like just shitty, just a shitty person, shitty business guy and I hit a point where I was like you know what I could do something way cooler than this this is kind of bullshit and we had a huge blowout and like he fired me like brutally fired me (laughs) and just to be fair good on him that was like the the first time he had a spine about anything so he fired (laughs) and uh, I had a total Jerry Maguire moment he fired me I got off the phone with him shaved my head took a shower (laughs) Got on my phone, called all my clients, said, hey, I just got fired from my job. And they were like, cool, I'm just going to come work with you. And so I just like brought all of my clients over. Oh, just started, smart. That's smart. awesome. Smart. It was good. And, like they tried to sue me a bunch and it was like kind of back and forth. But that's how I started the company. And essentially what we do is I'm a therapist that works in the business world. And I work with like senior level leaders and like CEOs and kind of C-suite and a little bit below that of like major companies that you'd hear yeah. And I help the leaders make decisions about what they're going to do, how they can lead. I help them like develop better culture. I help them develop develop better leadership. I guide them about having more like kind of human practices. And just to be clear, they don't have me in there because there's always a problem. Like a lot of times, these are great people who are trying yeah. to do good things, but they need someone who can help them understand the psychology of what's going on around them, right. so they can yeah. be in space. Yeah. And uh, it's been really cool. So like our company mission is basically like we just want to empower people while reducing suffering because like i think we can all relate to the idea of working with a boss that you hate like <laughs> if you've ever had a boss who's an asshole yeah my yeah. job is to make sure that doesn't happen on some level and that you don't get degraded or treated badly or any kind of wild wild stuff so i started a company it was just me and my notebook and a, and a cell phone and like tons of fear and anxiety <laughs> and later i've got a team of 11 people all across north america um, we work with like some pretty major companies and uh it's great it's been it's been totally awesome yeah man that's, I'm that's super amazing. proud of you man as, as your friend that's, and like I said, as somebody who's toured with you and watched it happen it, it's really cool and the other thing i'm really excited about is that you have you do did in all this find uh time to start a new band with with uh chris who who you've played with who's also a friend um tell us a little bit about change coming together i've plugged you guys on uh earlier episode i loved the ep i've played it for Isaac. it's cool old school so, uh hardcore it's, it's awesome tell me a little bit about uh the urge to create again and all of this stuff why, why do a band or why, why do music again you know like there's times in my life where i'm the most unhappy and those are the times when i'm not playing hardcore or play uh, music and yeah. i'd say play music but i'm not a good musician so i can't play anything else. i can only stick in <laughs> um i fuck i dude i love hardcore i love first of all, i love creating and it's like how i socialize with friends it's how i hang out like i don't know i'm a nerd like i love down <laughs> and like knowing about it but, okay you know you know that earth crisis scene that busky oh, just, I just did? got it it's great yeah that level of like obsession with something I love yeah, like I, I want to see where a barcode falls on a record and why. Like, yeah. you know, and so like I love hardcore, love the culture of it, I love the characters in it. Like I just love everything about it. Not everything, but most of it. Right. Yeah. So that's where it came from. And um I just like I just wanted to do something that was like a little bit more aggressive than I'd done and a little bit more I don't know, pulled from different places. And so we did the change record and I'm, it's like, I'll say hands down. It's the best record I ever did. It's, I'm real confident. Cool. It's really awesome. So the new, That's the cool. new album comes out tomorrow. Uh, tell everybody the title of that record and where they can buy it. And a little bit of information about that record. Yeah. So the record's called closer still, uh, you can get it through react records and reacts distributed by death wish. So you get it at death. And wish. You guys will see that on your screen uh, right now. We'll have a link over the, the screen. For that. And, uh, the record's called closer still. Cause it's like, I had like a real bad incident in uh, 2016 uh, that had to do with Champion, and it was it was tough and it was really really intense situation. And uh, one of the things that I I've probably never in my life ever felt like an urge to like run away from something. Like I've yeah. always viewed that's like I want to sit down and kind of deal with shit. 
And it's uh, probably the only time in my life I ever was like, fuck, I just want to run away from this. I just want to hide my head in the sand. Yes. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. A, lot, a lot of stuff happens. Like the, it's, life could really like hit you. And all of a sudden it's just like, like sometimes you have to, to like run away for just to, 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 re, to recoup everything, to get, get, get better than face what you have to face. You know what I mean? Dude, that's exactly it. Like I, I definitely kind of like had to duck out for a little bit and just yeah. like compose myself. But the record's called Closer Still because like it's one of the only times I ever like was like, holy shit, I just can't handle this. Yeah. And then I got my feet back underneath me and instead of like running away from it, I just wanted to like really understand what happened. I wanted to be in that space. I wanted to hear the stories. I yeah. wanted to like do what I could. And the whole record is about just like, and it's something Jay, you said to me a while ago. It's like, hey man, don't just don't be a passenger in in your own tragedy, man. Don't totally. be a passenger in that, yeah. that happens to you. Like, get behind the steering wheel and try and move it towards a positive destination. Totally, yeah, man. and I don't remember saying that to me, but I, remember, I was like, well, I remember as a fan and again as a friend, man. I I always and I've said this to to both you and to Danny and and, and again, dude, just as somebody who's had things like that happen to me, that I feel like. And this goes for any situation, man. Try to control your own narrative in any situation because yeah. the longer you don't get uh, in front of these things, the longer it can spiral out and you can lose focus and lose control. And then, and then to your point, you kind of start even getting away from who you are and, and you remove yourself from those situations, you know? Yeah, yeah, definitely. That's it. So I just felt like real lost and I just wanted to get back behind the steering wheel. So I did this record and, you know, it's it's been a good – good thing for me largely so yeah, yeah that, feel good about it it's that's awesome man. I, i'm really excited about the record um for those people who don't know i i am opening up a record shop here in connecticut and i did yeah. copies of the shot of the the record so you'll be able to get it here um uh so aram before we let you go what else do you uh what else is going on with you i it sucks that this this covid thing happened because i feel like we probably would have gotten some kind of east coast shows and i would have gotten to hang out with you right at some <laughs> point oh yeah totally um man I don't know. There's lots of stuff going on. Like, can I just ask Isaac? You can ask questions? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Of course, man. Of course. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. So, mentally, Vax comes out. <laughs> yes, yes. Were, were people into it? Yeah. Well, you have to understand that that label that we signed to another planet is. Uh, was a subsidiary of Profile, which is a big hip hop. At the thing. time, Profile was huge. Yeah, I'm talking about huge, and, and I used to go up there just to hang out with people in Profile that I knew up, up there. And um, when I did the record, the record, we did all the music at uh, you know, in, in, by Boston, Rhode Island. It was Tom, uh, what's the name? I forgot the guy, Soares, Tom Soares. He did all new kids on the block and shit like oh, that. Yeah, he did, damn. He, he, he recorded there all the metal bands, yo. And so he did all it's it's so it's so so crazy. But um so what you was there, I didn't we had we didn't have music we didn't write any music. Like it was really weird. They told us <laughs> deadline and, and Mike Dijon back then his light was so like white trash a story a warrior. So he was like this thing of, <laughs> So basically like, he was like in charge of everything and everything he was like Married a kid, construction. <laughs> he's this white trash warrior. Now he's like, now he's civilized. But back then he was a fucking story of gorilla. You know what I mean? <laughs> so he was a caveman, that guy. So yeah, so I was, he like, so he took care of everything. And I was like, whatever. I, I don't even know. I, I, was, I was talking about that day. I didn't even know how to make shirts, but I, I got them made in my neighborhood. So, so we went there, recorded there. I didn't do my vocals there because Jimmy was playing there, and we didn't have the songs down. So Jimmy. Only did half the so thing, so he got another guy to play the other half. And, and I was like, what the fuck is going on? And how? So the other guy's there anywhere, so it's just weird how it all happened. Then I had to do my vocals with Noah, Noah from the Iceman in the city. So, so to listen, so when I did my vocals, I was there by myself, no help from any of my friends, no one in the studio with me. Seriously, it was crazy. So imagine this AJ Novello. And you know, I was like, like, I'm like, and you know, you see someone all the time, like, and he's a guitar player, bro. I need someone to help me with my vocals. No, no was a, no was helping me, and you know, from no one played bass for the Iceman. He was a great guy. You know? uh, so I did my vocals, but the night before, I got into a, a, a bad, bad, bad fight. Like, a, a, a one of them, it was horrible. Like, my, I had a. Uh, I didn't even go to. I didn't even go home to take a shower. I still had, a, I still had a, 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 a jumpsuit. And I, I hit some guy in the head with a chair so hard it broke. And he was this guy was gonna stab my friend. 
<laughs> it went like it, it went to stab my boy. Hey, when he went to stab my head with a with a chair, a stool, it broke his head, but it kept it going down, hit my leg. So I need stitches on my leg, but I didn't get stitches. So my whole <laughs> leg was all fucked up and wrapped up. And I'm in the booth singing, like like with the, with the, some guys like AJ Novello I know from Leeway, but he's not my boy back then. So he's telling me what to do. I'm like, and I'm a little like, yo, I'm a little, I'm I'm a bigger than life character, but this guy just, yo, did my favorite favorite fucking records, stuff, like Desperate Measures and fucking Portraits by You know what I mean? So he's telling me how to do stuff and really telling me like like almost not yelling at me sometimes. He's like, imagine me back then, like, yeah, microphone, I give a fuck. He's like, no, he's like, I do it like this. I'm like, who's this mother? But I can't yell at him or punch him in the face because he's AJ Novello. He's helping me, but in my mind, I'm a, I'm a street kid, you know what I mean? And it was just fucking nuts, but fucking, uh, I'm off track. What, what was your greatest <laughs> question? <laughs> you, answered, you answered the greatest question. You did. That was perfect. Okay, I got two more questions. <laughs> okay. Shout out to AJ Novell. What's something about you that's, like, misunderstood about you that actually bothers you? Like, that you feel misunderstood about, but it actually bothers you? Oh, good. Uh, it's like when, when something happens. This I, I feel good. I feel like talking to a therapist right now. So, <laughs> thank you so much. I basically want to um, when people think about me, they always when I meet them. This is this two things. I never start. I never started fighting my life. Never ever started fighting my my life. I hate bullies. I hate people who are fucking like pick on bullies. I usually beat up the bully when I'm growing up, and so people think that I'm a. People think I'm like six foot five steroid guy running around and, and like star fights pushing people. I'm like, hey, how you doing? I'd rather have a good time, watch a movie, you know, talk about Godzilla, you know, stuff like that. You mean? Know? But but another thing that bothers me when I bump into other tough guys, and when they see me, they're like, oh, I, I thought you were bigger. <laughs> I'm like, what the fuck? Yo, it's, it's like little sideways comments. You know? So it's like. All right, last question. Yes. What is perfectly understood about you? What do people know about you that you're like, yeah, that's totally right. That's exactly, that's exactly about I got, it. I got, I got, I got great heart. I would say, mm -hmm. I would say that, and then you always have your friends I, back, I, no, I friends no matter back. what. Even, even, listen, I, I, I belong to something that, I got, I got my friends, regular friends, I got people I grew up with, uh, family, then I got my DMS brothers, then I got people who I, I meet all over the world, and to, because of music and everything, and all I have to say is that when I meet someone and we 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 we, we talk and we, and we talk about life and I think there's very few people that I connect with. I mean, and when I connect with someone, it's I I'll give I'll do anything for my friend. Even I'll tell you I, 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 if I, Jay Jay done, if Jay had a problem and I was like Jay and I, and I was like listen <laughs> I'm gonna talk to this guy for you Jay, but you know you're wrong for doing that. You know what I mean? But I got your back. But, I, but after I kick this guy in the fucking teeth, I'm going to tell you, <laughs> say I'm sorry to him and to try and make it up, right? That's it. That's it. Thank you for answering uh, all my questions. You're welcome. <laughs> Yo, re really quick, uh, before we let you go, Ram, where can everybody find you online? Give us a plug on, on your socials. Plug the Cadence stuff and, and plug the change socials too. Just I want everybody who's here um because again i think this was very cool for our fans to just uh oh, was, hear a different side of <laughs> of the show and different uh you know we try to involve different guests from you know just again like Ezek always says we know so many people uh the hardcore scene is so uh, such a colorful place so i love the contrast here so yeah please uh plug where all your shit is so people who aren't familiar with you or your bands can can find you and, and interact with you yeah so you can check out my company at cadenceleadership.ca um my Instagram is Aram XR Slanian and the changes Instagram is change hardcore. And I think that's it beyond whatever else you find music. Awesome. Man. And I will have uh, links and everything here uh, for that stuff. So Aram, again, thank you so much for joining us. This was, this was great. Uh, Aram, it's, it's been great. Aram, listen, seriously, like uh, us talking the first time. Well, listen, right now, you guys will have to, am it's ama amazing. Aram, it's amazing. you will have to get Danny on your show, on your yo, podcast. I, 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 yo, next time you guys record, I want a song. <laughs> oh, he wants to get him. Oh, yeah. Get him a guest to change. Uh, LP. We'll do that. We'll do I'm that. On, I'm on that, brother. But uh, right. Aram, you should get him on your show. It would be very interesting because Aram's podcast is, is, is great. Um, I'm down. I'm so down. You guys should have a crossover right. episode uh, at some point. <laughs> I'm right. down. So much. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Thank you, my Thank brother. you so much, Aram, man. Thank Shout you, out, bro. man. Thank you so much. Yeah.
He's out, my brother. He's <laughs> I would like to welcome to the show the one and only Vampiro. Yeah! Yes, 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 yes. Hey, Vampiro, thank you for joining us on Corona Chronicles, smoke man. It, How are smoke you? Smoke it, smoke it, smoke if you have it. Bro, this is <laughs> thank you guys for having me. It's Dude, only it's been a, a year. It's, a a fucking honor. it's okay, don't worry about it. Vampiro, uh, for those who aren't familiar with you, tell uh, the list. fuck themselves. <laughs> 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 Tell the listeners a little, just a very quick before we get into your story, man, because I, I want to talk uh, first about the, the new movie. But tell the, the the listeners a little bit about yourself. And, and your origin, uh, the tell about the origins. Like, like you're, you're from Canada, right? Yeah. Ontario, Ontario, Canada. Yeah. Ontario start... lived in Montreal. Montreal. Used to go down to New York all the time for the shows, right? So yes, because. Uh, the scene in Canada at the time was in Toronto, but I lived in Montreal because that's where the wrestling company was. But I was like 15, man. Yeah. So we used to play hardcore shows and punk shows, and then we'd go down to New York, and, and, and it was the same with the wrestling. So from there, I went to Los Angeles, and I started you know, bodyguarding and playing in bands in L.A. Yeah. And uh, fuck, I don't know, man. So I just got the call, you know? You can't go to Mexico and uh, to train to be a pro wrestler. But when I got there, it was right when Guns N' Roses had broken oh that's yeah. sick and, and at that time in mexico the government didn't allow live bands so everything was like super punk rock like underground violent yeah. punk rock <laughs> yeah or local mexican rock and roll and they didn't even have martial amps things like that you couldn't get it because the government cut that shit when i got there that same month the government opened up the markets metallica came uh oh, youtube yeah. came so it was like fucking bang and the vampiro character looked like, you know, long blue hair and the tattoos. Yeah. He looked like he looked like one of them fucking L.A. rocker guys. And I was in the right place at the right time, brother. And I got to New Mexico <laughs> when I was eighteen, and I fucking I left when I was fifty-one. So, oh my yeah, god, you, you have had a, yeah. a, a man. Your journey is fucking a. It's it's super impressive, man. Uh, and I want to talk about that a little bit first. Let's. Let's talk about the movie that you just released. Uh, it just came out on I'm digital. I'm on a fucking journey right now. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it, ju it just came out on digital. <laughs> so both of those are out that. now. Grab yeah. that shit. Uh, it's called Nail in the Coffin, The Fall and Rise of Vampiro. <coughs> um, but tell us a little bit about that because the trailer, uh, you'll see the overlay while we're talking about it, but the movie is sick. Uh, Vampiro, tell us a little bit about this coming together and, and the journey of putting this movie. What? Wait, 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 man. That's fucking Danny D, man. That's fucking sex and violence right there. I gotta talk to you about that, man. I gotta fucking, we got other shit to talk about. But yeah, okay, the movie. <laughs> we, 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 listen, we'll get into you. We, we usually ease with the easier stuff, and then the conversation will we'll roll into yeah. deeper. I promise. Uh, all right. <laughs> well, I've, I've been very lucky, right? And I've done a lot of crazy things. Well, not, you know, you just, I, I just, we've we're all chosen different paths and lives, and um, every every single thing. That's the greatest thing about being a punk rocker. You know what I mean? Every single thing that, I, like, I first saw the Clash when I was like eleven. That's crazy, oh, shit. man. The tail end of the seventies, right? Like, I got yeah. into punk rock right at the end of the first wave, and um, so since then, you, you know, I was a really big New York Dolls guy, really big Johnny Thunders guy, that whole fucking thing. So I kind of. You know, the so, Ramones, all that. Yeah, and so that was, like, it was just kind of like a Ramones thing. You know, just go and just, just fucking go. Yeah, just and, do it. Uh, yeah, so I got really lucky, you know. and, and uh, But then I started becoming, became, becoming, I started to become famous. Yeah. And I didn't, I, I, I didn't understand that because, you know, I was a street kid. Yeah. And, and then they started treating me like a fucking teen idol. And I was like, well, I, I just didn't understand it. Yeah. The first couple of months, it's a lot of fun, right? You're 19 years old and you got all these, Latino women all over you. What are you supposed <laughs> to do? <laughs> but then after a while, it's like, it, it, it's just like, get this fucking shit away from me, right? Yeah. So you start doing more extreme things. Um, and then my past was catching up to me too, you know? Like, it was really hard. D did some things in Canada, you know? When you work, when you, you know, when you, when you, when you got to survive, you survive. This yeah. is just what it is, right? So fuck it. So I was in Mexico and I was like 19, 20 and all this shit was happening. So I started to do more extreme things in my life Yeah. to justify all these magazine covers and girls and shit. I, yeah. I just couldn't deal with it. So I started yeah. taking a lot of pain pills because I was getting hurt. Yeah. And uh, 
You know, I was wrestling six, seven times a day. Wow. Seven Damn, days. What? Damn, that's like, fucking yeah. crazy, dude. Like, Vampiro was a rock star down there. I don't fucking understand why, but it yeah. is what it, it is. connected. So, so the, the, the movie is basically a recap, because when it got to its point, like, you know, 30, 40,000 people a show, four or five shows a day, you, you, you lose your fucking mind, right? So I, I got married and I had a baby girl. But right before I had the, I got married, I had a, I had a, a bad, bad OD. My heart stopped everything. You know, oh, I had man. to get the adrenaline. Damn. Thing. But I saw an angel. And I had the vision. It came, and, he, and, and the angel said, you're going to get a gift from God. It's because you hit rock bottom, and he wants to see if you're man enough to handle that shit. Yeah. So I met my wife, and I was like, well, this has got to be the gift. So I guess I better change my ways. But it wasn't. Because she left, man. But I, had a baby, <laughs> oh, man. But, but I had a baby girl, dude. And oh, man. I, that fucking baby girl that that's my treasure that from that day no more fucking around straightened out been sober how long uh well i don't this doesn't count right no 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 no, no, no. no. Okay. uh <laughs> since my since my daughter's birth brother 20 years oh, and, congr- um, congrats oh, man. man that's awesome congrats, bro. thank you congrats, so congrats. thank you but I, you know, you know, Danny, this is not this is not a way I'm a, I'm a fucking huge fan of yours because you know exactly what I'm talking about, man. Yeah. She got taken away from me. Yeah. And I, and and when I broke, so I broke my neck. You had oh. these these concussions. And I was kind of like a vegetable for a year. Damn. But I didn't want to leave Mexico because I didn't want to abandon my daughter, even though my wife left and she got remarried and all that. Yeah. And I can only see my kid whenever the fuck they wanted to let me. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, that, that's that's horrible. I'm sorry right? about that, bro. You're horrible. Bro. But uh, I wouldn't abandon my daughter. So yeah. I, even though I was super vampiro famous, yeah, I had to go back to, to my old life a little bit because I had yeah. no income. I was a fucking vegetable. So yeah, all of that added up to my daughter going through a bullying thing in school. She left her mother's house and she moved in with me. Oh, shit. So, yeah, she was like 13 and she was like, Dad, I'm going to either kill myself or you got to come and get me. What are you supposed to do? Yeah. I went and got her, moved back to Canada, and then when that happened, I got diagnosed with Alzheimer's. Oh, my oh, God. man. Yeah. So I either had to find a way to get healthy or I was yeah. going to die. Yeah. So I got I got up to 360 pounds because of all the drugs, right? The, the medicine, yeah. the, the brain, the water okay. weight. Yeah. Well, yeah. You know. Yeah. So then I uh, I talked to John Joseph. Yeah. And, and he was like, yo, go fucking vegan. And this was like six years ago, right? Yeah, yeah, definitely. So I went fucking vegan, and uh, I start. I changed all the opiates out for this, and yeah. um, beat Alzheimer's. I'm beating the Parkinson's. I lost 130 pounds. I got my career back, doing movies, doing TVs, recording, doing all kinds of shit. That's amazing, dude. That's, that's yeah, yo, Vampiro. That's, 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 yeah, that's that awesome. John man. Joseph, yeah. Shout out to you, my brother. You, dude, as, as you, a, yeah, you overcame. You went and faced something, multiple things. In your, in your, in your, like beyond obstacles. Yeah, man. That's that the life, life threatening, the close, life closing yeah. Dude, that, things. And that, you just went the positive way. And, and the fact the punk rock, hardcore John Joseph is the <laughs> one that we're talking about to help you out. Hell, that's yeah. fucking amazing. Hell that's yeah. Amazing. Man. That, that's amazing. Well, listen, it's awesome. it was, it was fucking, you know, KG. Yeah, Kevin, Kevin Gill. Gill. We're Kevin yeah. Gill. Yo, listen, we hold, were hold just on. talking. Yeah. We were just talking. Kevin Gill. I brought Kevin Gill to his first hardcore show, Metal Show ever. <laughs> really? Sounds of Kevin Gill, Queens, everyone. Shout out SFT Shout out. Records. SFT Records. So Kevin Gill is the man. Kevin, Kevin's my boy for years. And uh, <laughs> I, I, so I was, when I was going through all this shit, yeah. that's when I found out about you. Yes. And, <laughs> and I, I've told you, motherfucker, that you're, you were, you know, John Joseph, uh, yeah. you know, but you were, you were a big influence too, and I gotta tell you, man, I gotta give you love because. Oh, uh, thank you, you know, brother. Awesome. Thank you so no, much. Man. That means the fucking world to me, man. Yo, I know, I know about all that shit. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. You know, you know uh, yeah. and I know about you, <laughs> and I know about all that. So you, but you're always positive. You're always fucking busting your ass. You're always pushing. You're pushing. You're pushing. Yeah. So you, the guy that I used as that anchor. To fucking get my shit together, because yeah, that, that means dope. that means the world to me. It's so th- yeah, I, 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 I'm fucking honored, bro. Because like me and you always spoke, we spoke, we spoke, yeah. and 
Then when then when you wore a crown of thorns shirt on the Lucha Libre the thing, <laughs> I was like, oh shit, look at the crown of thorns. I was like, Kevin Gilgan. I was like, oh shit. Hey. I, was, yeah. <laughs> I told fucking Kevin, I said, listen, man, give me something. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I want to show some love, you know what I'm saying? Because yeah. all that, all that shit that you've gone through, dog, and the way you fucking handle business, and you don't quit, and you stay true to the art. Yeah. Listen, man, when I had to get better, I had to do so. I couldn't go to the gym anymore because of my yeah. injuries. Yeah. So the doctors, believe it or not, recommended playing video games for the memory work. Yeah. And I've been hiking. I walk 15 miles every day, dog. Oh, every that's awesome, fucking day. Man. That's amazing. Because I'm going to Spain to do that uh, this Camino de Santiago. It's like a religious walk, and you it's a yeah. Templar thing. You know, I know you talk about it. Yeah. I know you talk about it. Right? Yeah. yeah. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna go do that. That's 500 miles. It's 44 days. Wow. So I'm training for that. Whoa. Wow. Yeah, homie. But I'm gonna go there, and you better give me a fucking shirt. I mean, yeah, I, 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 I just give you. I'm gonna send you a bag. <laughs> Yo, we'll have DR. We'll have, a, we'll have to have DRP send him out a bunch of shit, man. Yeah, because the fucking guy. I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do that walk, but I want that logo. You know what I mean? I want yeah, the logo. yeah, I got you. I got. I got. Yeah. I got you. I got you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's awesome. I, I, know, I, know, yeah. I know. You know, so crazy, man. People, when when we when, when, when people see us talk on, on on social media, they're like, "How the hell do these guys know each other?" <laughs> but I'm like, "Punk rock, bro." Punk hey. <laughs> what? That's what KG said. How the fuck did that happen? I said, I don't know, man, but you know, it's, it's the power of the universe. Yeah, homie. Well, you know, hey, hardcore you connection know, Billy, is very real. Yeah. You know, the hardcore music connection in punk rock, I think, keeps yeah. it brings a lot of like minded souls and people together because you, you got to have something fucked up. We, I mean, me and Isaac always say this you got to be fucked up in some way if you're in yeah. this culture Definitely. listening to this music or involved in it. <laughs> you got you to be fucked up if you're not. Yes, this is the yes. only place that tells the truth today is right off the yeah, air, true facts, man. It's facts. crazy shit. Hey, man, all the mother guys need a dick. Hey, Vampiro, <laughs> can, can, Vampiro, can said, I ask wait, you? Uh, wait, hold on, hold on. Oh. You, you were just, you were just with Billy Biohazard, right? Billy he Bile. just said to say, he just said to say hello. Yeah, he we just had him on, hello. We had him on not, not that long ago. He was a, he was a great guest. Uh, Vampiro, I want to ask you. This is just a, a quick thing I saw online, and you had mentioned that you did, were doing some some uh, bodyguarding work early. Did you really bodyguard for Vill Millie Vanilli back in the day? It. That's yes, crazy. Sir. So listen, were you at the show when not when the music uh, skipped or whatever that show in Connecticut? Brother, it was it wasn't Connecticut. It was in in Detroit, the first one, and then Philadelphia. Oh, okay. Cause I was, I was there from the beginning, brother. I was there from when they found those two fucking guys in a nightclub in Germany breakdancing. That's how it all happened. <laughs> That's why. Yeah, I, saw, I read. I read that uh, when I was. I was just doing a little bit of background stuff on you, and I saw that story, and I was like, "All right, I got. I got to ask him about that because it's just too, too yeah. crazy, you know." Yeah. Well, here, I'll, 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 I'll give you. I'll give you a little a, a New York style story about those two fucking Please. guys. <laughs> so, so, so they were. They were brother. They they were fucking. They, they they were fucking strong, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> they, were, they were strong. They 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 had this one guy, and he'd come in with like a basketball, full you know, coat. This fuck. Oh, that, that was the rock, bro. And they were like, <laughs> <laughs> you know I, mean? I and I never saw that kind of stuff before, you know, not at that level. Wow. <laughs> and, uh, so I, so I, I had one of my homies with me, and and and. Uh, we were watching Millie Vanilli and they would go to these parties. And this is when the rave scene was just starting. Ecstasy was brand new. This is like the mid eighties, right? So we were in <laughs> London and, and uh, we, 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 we would have to go with these two fucking idiots and they would brother, they, you would never see two. They were just fucking, you know, <laughs> they were going, but they had a sponsorship with Adidas and, and they would send us to, to Germany because yeah, they were in England and we would go and we would go to Adidas. You know, because they had jackets and sneakers. Yeah, brother, my friend, we we took six hockey bags. We took the <laughs> fucking well out. So, <laughs> fucking thing, and 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 we signed it all as the, yeah. as the soccer stars. Yeah, and then we <laughs> sold it all. <laughs> that's fucking amazing. That's man. That's, amazing. that's funny. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but hey, what, what are you supposed to do? No, I guess, yeah. dude. I mean, I think to me the most interesting parts of people's life journeys are things like that that are so like yeah, of these like of weird things you know these anomalies that happen that you know you end up in these situations and then you know it's just like a crazy thing man so reading that uh was just fucking wild oh yo hope, 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 you, hope you know that you know, you, you speak fluent spanish 
and you know, I, I bug out, and I hope it's funny. For like, like, how long did it take you to learn to speak Spanish like that? It was strange because uh, I didn't speak a word of it. You yeah. can't learn in school. You can't fucking speak in school. You've got to live with the people. Yeah. You've got. Yeah. If you got a fucking ninja who speaks Spanish and he's a white dude, yeah, then you you know he's put his time in in the streets with the real people. <laughs> Because you can't learn slang. Yeah. <laughs> Puerto Rican, Spain, and Spain, and Mexico, there's the yeah. dialect. You can't. Yeah, it's all different. Yeah, yeah. You, you've got to fucking put your time in. So in Mexico, you know, wrestling, you know, th those are those are street dudes. So you're. In <laughs> yeah. Damn, they're crazy. With, with, you know, and them fucking ninjas, they don't speak Spanish like a politician. You know what I'm saying? So you. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But, and those guys <laughs> told me, so listen, do you want to learn how to fucking speak Spanish? Get a girlfriend. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> because she'll put your shit in, in check quick, right? Yeah. So I, I dated a lot, you know girls in Mexico, but then when I went to Puerto Rico, I lived in Puerto Rico for like six years, going back and forth. For real? Oh shit! Yeah, yeah, is la verde pa? Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah man. And uh, so I, I dated a girl in Puerto Rico, and her fucking Spanish was totally different because it's half yeah, 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 it's yeah, a lot yeah. of slang, Spanglish, Spanglish. Yeah, but. But it's sexy. It's swag. It's you know what I mean? Yeah. It's, it has a whole other vibe. It makes sense. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You know, like Cuban Spanish. They say some word like in fucking in Puerto Rico. They Cuban. would say Wawa. I'm Cuban. He's Cuban. Oh, so you know, yeah. so they would say, <laughs> go in the Wawa. Yeah, and yeah. Like, what the fuck are you talking yeah. about going the to bus. Wawa? That's the bus. And they were like, well, in Puerto in Cuba, but in Puerto Rico, it's a it's a car, a Colombia, like a van. <laughs> Fuck do you call this thing a wawa? It's because well, when you step on the gas, it goes wow. Oh, that wah. makes sense. Yeah. Like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> you see, but in Mexico, bicho, bicho yeah, is yeah. a <laughs> bicho. In, in Puerto Rico, it's a bicho. It's different. Yeah, it's different. Yeah, <laughs> you go to the and you say, "Can I have some fucking bug spray?" Can I, have, you know? And they're like, and the guy says, "No, no, you got to go say mama bicho." <laughs> so you go in the store, you know, it was mama bicho. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, shit like that. So you've got to put your time in, right? You got to. Earn your spirit, oh yeah, oh my yeah. God. yeah. I mean, to your point, Vampiro. Like, I grew up speaking Spanish and English. My house, like, a, you know, uh, pretty much since I was born, and I failed school Spanish because it's like totally different. You know, I could, couldn't even. I think I got an F in it. You know, because it's so different. Like. <laughs> You made that mistake. Bro. Yeah, you, I did. You went. You went to school. That was I, a fucking. Yeah. Well, hey, listen. I didn't say I finished school. I just said that I went to a class there and took. Yeah. <laughs> didn't go through the whole the whole thing. Uh, hey, so Vampiro, do you do you still get to check out new bands and stuff? Is there anything that you listen to, like uh, like newer punk rock bands or hardcore bands that you're following, or you just kind of like listen to like the classic shit? It, it's it's got to be careful when you answer that question, right? Yeah. You don't anybody. I kind well, of on listen this show, to... you could offend anybody you want. I mean, this, this, uh, if it's going to go anywhere, it's on Diablo's Dead. Uh, yeah. Well, yeah what, what I mean, what I mean. Yeah, what hurt no one's feelings. Like. Yeah, okay. What, I don't want to disrespect yeah. the rebellion of, 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 of music, right? right, right. So, I, I, right now, listening to hardcore bands my age, because yeah. the things that the guys say, I can relate to. They're not fucking stupid kids fishing for words because they want to be a fashion thing, you know. And yeah, just yeah, get... yeah. no, 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 no. I, I, yeah. I can't, I can't, I can't deal with that. Um, but no, man, I'm a, you know, Sex Pistols, Ramones, the first two Stray Cats albums. How about the Dictators? And, uh, you like the Dictators? The fucking Dictators. Uh, you know that era that I got. You know the Johnny Thunders album. That Jackson, that... Jackson Heights is from. He's from my neighborhood, Johnny Thunders. The, you know those five fifteen albums from that era. That's my bible, dude. You know, but I, you know, and then, I, and then I listen to the, the the hardcore stuff. You know, yeah. like any stuff, like Biohazard, like like you know, um, Agnostic Front, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, of course. But the new the new bands, no, nah, they're kind of. <laughs> yeah, it ain't my thing, dude. <laughs> no, it's what's up with your what's up with your band? What's going on with your, with your music? Yo. Yeah, I just just gonna ask you. Oh, yo, yo. So the fucking virus starts, right? So before the virus starts, made yeah. the album. I'm, I'm, I'm talking to, to Danny. Gonna, we were going to come to New York. Yeah, first. we played at Jabba Fest. Remember? Yeah, brother. Yeah. I was, set, But I set up a whole tour. I had the whole fucking tour. Oh, so I, man. I said, to, I said to the guys, hey, um, 
you know, I got to go back. The Canadian governor's, government's calling me, yeah. but don't, you know, well, don't worry. So I, you know, I'm calling, I'm calling, I'm texting. Nobody's answering me. <laughs> then I, I'm, I'm going on Facebook and, and I see record release party. Okay. I said, all right. So I oh. click. Brother, they re recorded the album. They Come. took me off it. Oh, they spoke. what? Come on, that's fucking. No way. Fuck they, they, they stole my webpage and they stole the name of the band and they cut me out of everything. Are you... Yeah, straight up. Straight no. up, brother. Oh, man, fuck them. Man, fuck but, that. but you know what? It's all good because God bless them. I wish them success. And, and, uh, Things happen for a reason, and I'm in a much better place. I'm going to do some vocals with Count Time next week. Good. Me and Billy are going to do some stuff. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. Thanks. They fucking love you, dog. Those, those, my brother, my brother, you. Junior. Shout to Junior. Yeah. Count Time. Yeah, he's doing well. You know, he's taking, he's training every day. He's eating better. Good. You know, Good. You know yes, thank God. Thank God. You know what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm happy. I'm happy when I see like people I know, friends, and they're doing positive things. It's all love, and I'm happy for them, though. No. Yeah, so he, you know, I'm gonna, I've been hanging out with those guys. So you know, fucking life is good, man. <laughs> you know, twenty years ago, I would have really broke my heart what happened with yeah. the band. Right. Yeah. I, hey, man, I got those fucking guys a national tour, yeah. and then we were gonna go to Mexico for six months. I had oh. it was set, dog. Fuck, man. But but if somebody has to do that to you. They got a lot of issues. Yeah, they got their know? own shit to sort out. Uh, but you know, you know what? People. Another thing is people. When they step into something, and you do you do all this work to get all that done, and all of a sudden they they, they do that like, they, like they they don't know what they missed. They, they and and and, and yeah. things happen for a reason. And I'll so say maybe, this too: is it's better it happened in the beginning than you invested yeah. even more time down the line or some shit happened. You know what? It's like fuck them because you know what dude nah, like Vampire, like, you know whatever you need we, we'll help you and not you know i you know we got your back yeah. so fuck Jay, those guys yeah. i can help you, <laughs> you. That's it. yeah Jay, he has a regular reg label don't yeah. worry it's so all good we're, 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 you're, you're fine we, we get we'll get them the best backing band there is fuck those other guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah i got I, you know i got so much shit going on here in la i think uh i'm close to getting a deal with iheart radio for a podcast sick so oh. Yes, like a punk rock thing, and just uh, I got the TV show in L.A. Movie came out. I got other things going on with movies, doing stuff with music. Bro, I'm in a fucking great place, I gotta, man. Uh, I got to connect him too uh, with with my boy who does uh, WrestleBotch on Instagram, Ryan. Uh, he runs that account and he does those interviews and shit. That that would be a good uh, good thing, man. For I got to yeah, connect man. with you guys. He's he's cool. Dope, um, dope, man. Can, 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 can I ask you a question? Um, yeah. Who's growing up? Who was your favorite wrestler? My mom, she used to kick me. <laughs> oh, that's the best answer. <laughs> so, how was the right, that's one? How was the wrestling with uh, with Doyle and those guys, the, the mistress guys? It was a fucking great. I was a fan. <laughs> I was a fucking fan. Yeah, like. Yeah. like like Vampire, what it was, was it like to be at WCW, especially at that era, was so hot, man. Like, what was that like yeah, for you, man? I mean, it must have been just a trip, right? Uh, it was. It was actually pretty depressing there. Really? <laughs> yeah, it was very depressing, man. Who did you, know, you have beef with? Real, like, was it like real beefs? Like after yeah. after behind well, stage? I'll, yeah, I'll tell you about that. About <laughs> but, but with, with the Misfits, man, yeah, it was. You know, Jer Jerry, Jerry only's Jerry only. He's a good guy. Yeah, They're both Jerry's guys. awesome. Yeah, I got to meet him. He's great. Yeah. Like, like at, but at 7 o'clock in the morning, Jerry, Jerry's misfit Jerry. Like, yeah. You don't give a fuck, dude. Yeah. And it's like, brother, you got to, you got to, you know, you can tone it down every now and then, right? Nope, you can't do it. But, um, <laughs> I can't do it. You know, he, he'd be out in the lobby of the hotel and he would talk to the fans at like 4 a.m. Yeah. Like he wouldn't, he wouldn't stop. And I was like, bro, fucking chill on that shit, man. You know, <laughs> but, and, and Do it was Doyle, Michael Graves and myself. We, man, we would just sit in the room and play PlayStation and we would just like get, get fucking Jerry away from us. <laughs> <You know? laughs> Shout out to Jerry Olney. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, Jer Jerry's dope, man. He took care of me. You know, we rolled together. We got along yeah. real good. But Doyle, Doyle was great. Doyle's Doyle, awesome. Doyle's good. Both, both of those guys are cool. It's crazy, the brothers. Right? How crazy? Yeah. Like that? They are. They're totally different. They're like, you know what I mean? so. Yeah, yeah. And, but Doyle's <laughs> doing well, man. But you know, yeah. Jer Jerry. Well, you know, hey, hey fuck it. <laughs> it's what it is, right? <laughs> but uh, but WCW was bad, man, with the drug use. 
Like all oh, those for real? guys. Yeah, like you know, everybody partied. Those guys partied hard, hard. But they were there was about thirty or forty guys that were like major, major opiate addicts. Oh, like yeah, pain, painkillers and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Painkillers, oxycontin, all that bullshit. Yeah, yeah that you know? That's fucking crazy. Yeah. Well, they would fucking you know they would go to the moon. They would fucking gink up and then to come when down. They they take them fucking Xanax, but they would like take thirty or forty. To your that's, heart how, that's, stuff. that's how. That's how. Yeah, that's how you die. That's, yeah, that's fucked up. You, know? right? you can't fuck with that shit, and and it was depressing for me because I didn't want to be around that. So, but you know, but and because of so much drug use and steroids and shit, there was yeah. beef. You know, guys would throw down, and you know, none of them could fight, but they would get into it. <laughs> <laughs> but but there were some bad dudes who would fuck you up. But those guys, nobody even, you know. Yeah, you know, it's like you in 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 the fucking when you're doing a thing, you know, you stay yeah. away. They say that fucking guy in the corner, that's his corner, <laughs> <laughs> right? You know, yeah. it is what it is. <laughs> that's yeah. crazy stuff. Any at uh, any time, like, uh, was there any any beef you saw, like in the back, and people really went like crazy, like crazy, <laughs> like who was the toughest wrestler you know? Like that, you know that you personally was the hardest guy that you saw and you met, and he was like, no one. No, every, everybody knows it's it's King Haku Tonga, King Tonga. Yeah. Ah! Was, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's he's the all time. There's not even a second. He's he the one. Any, he could fuck anyone up. He'd be like, what? <laughs> and and he did. <laughs> and he did. Oh I, shit! Like That's one time hard. he. Somebody fuck with him in a bar. Uh, anybody you want to fuck with, you pick him. Yeah. Brother, he pulled he pulled that guy's eye out when he was talking to him. He just fucking. Wow. And everybody was like, "What the fuck just happened?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, he was like that. He was that guy. Yeah. yeah he, he would. They would use. They used to bring him in. Yeah. To different territories, if somebody needed discipline. Wow. That that's he would yo. That's hard. Yeah. Oh, it's foul. That's hard. <laughs> so, you know, if he was coming in, you knew something bad was going to happen. Like, that was his job. <laughs> he's just a crazy Samoan, like, like crazy. Is is a teddy bear, man? Is <laughs> <laughs> is a teddy bear, but yeah. he's a, he's a fucking T Rex. Yeah. He's a T Rex, brother. He will fucking yeah. He's he's a Samoan and and he's fucking crazy. Bro. Tonga, he's from Tonga, you know. That's and, how you and, you know, he used to break the coconut trees and shit. They, they had to send, <laughs> yeah, it's a true story, brother. They had to send them to fucking uh, sumo school yeah. to calm him down because he was beating, he was fucking killing guys on the island. He would punch them and break their fucking heads. He was, Whoa. he's a, he's a strong fucking guy. Strong, yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and he, 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 like, he would hit. He would. They brought him to Mexico to be my bodyguard because yeah. the guys were beating me up. And one, <laughs> one time. One guy was behind me and he was holding me. Yeah. And there was another guy in front of me hitting me. So there was three of them. He hit the guy from behind and the three of us fucking went out of the ring under the floor. He Fuck. fucking knocked us. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, he was like that strong, brother. You know? Yo, Vampire, yeah, yeah, what, yeah. Oh, what, 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 match, what match sticks out? Uh, and I know you've had such a, a huge storied career, but is there, is there a match that sticks out to you as, uh, as what you feel is your most memorable performance? Uh, not really, man. You know, it was never that I liked my work, but there was moments like going out with the Misfits, for example. Yeah, being yes. a that was what the fuck, right? Um, <laughs> go, go, going to um, to to Japan with Rancid. Oh, that must so, have been sick. yeah. But I got to go because I was Vampiro. You know, <laughs> so that was because we that was fucking crazy, and I just was on the side of the stage every night, you know, kind of babysitting yeah. Jim and Lars. And because uh, because uh, Skinhead Rob didn't go to that tour, so I took his place. And, <laughs> and and you know you got Big J on one side, and I was on the other. And it was wait, the Stray Cats was GBH and Rance. I was like, what am I doing here? You know, <laughs> shit like that. Yeah, it's yeah. Fucking, but a match, yeah, yeah. The best, the biggest moment for me was when I wrestled Hulk Hogan. Yeah, that's... that was pretty cool. Whoa! Yeah. How how was he to you personally? Personally, like before the fight when he spoke to, him, was he nice too? To me, he was super cool. He used to let me come in his, you know, share his dressing room, and yeah. he would give me advice. Man, that's fucking Hulk Hogan, dog. I know. That's, How, yeah. you know yo, he's, he's a big dude, right? Yeah, he's a big motherfucker. When you shake his hand, <laughs> it's like it's like it's like putting on a baseball glove. He's a big guy. <laughs> you know, that's, that's, the, that's the Hulk, man. Yeah. I was like, 
and that night I, I, I beat him. Oh, and, whoa, yeah. And oh, I was like, man. I was like, sir, I, 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 I can't do this. Yeah. You know, I, I don't want to do that. And he yeah. was like, uh, it's business kid. And I was like, yeah, but it's not for me. You, you're uh, my girl. You know, I can't. That's cool. That's cool. That that's cool. Like, yeah. That's so cool, man. But he, he was like, uh, if you don't go, I'm going to knock the fuck out of you. So <laughs> <laughs> and it, it was a beautiful, it helped me later on in my life, in my career, right? When I was helping younger guys. Cause they yeah. were, they look, they look at me like that now. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's fucking but, amazing, bro. But you know, but that's that, but that's still, that's the Hulkster, man. So that one, that one was good. And wrestling Ric Flair was also another big one. Oh, yeah, I love Flair is fucking badass, dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So those were the those were the big ones. Yeah, I mean, dude, even just to get to say like those two names together that you were in the fucking ring amazing. is amazing. I mean, think about it. That's like the fucking you know, that's that's the, the Mount Rushmore of wrestling would have those two yeah, faces. Not on. one of those fucking guys can say what I can say, man. I'm on fucking this podcast. <laughs> those fuckers. Are- <laughs> And we love, thank dude, you, and we appreciate you, you doing brother. that for us, man. Again, I was, I was really excited. I got to plug you, all, all my, I got to shout out all my wrestling uh, friends, Brock, Yvonne, Yvonne, Ryan from WrestleBotch, who were so excited when I told them. I was like, "Yo, we got Vampire." They were like, "Holy shit!" They were, I mean, they were psyched. So I, uh, I, I, got, I, I got to know. mention their names while I, while I talk to you. Yeah, hell yeah, of course, they, they, brother. Love, they love all that. I shit. mean, I go to, you know, um, I started doing volunteer work with uh, the guardian angels about 25 years ago, helping yeah. kids in Mexico. Yeah. And so I go, I go to New York city all the time. It's either for wrestling or a punk show or to see Curtis or whoever yeah. it is, you know, but uh, I got to come and see you, man. Yeah. Yeah. But where, 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 where are you living now though? Are you, are, I'm, yeah. I, I'm, in, I'm in, I'm in Jersey city now. Yeah. How do you like but, that? And it's, it's 12 minutes from, from man. Yeah. But, you know, <laughs> yeah. You know. Yeah. Yeah. It, 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 yo, you know what? I'm happy. Well, because I'm out here, and like, if, if I'm in my neighborhood and in Queens, I'll be caught up in the same shit. <laughs> you know what I mean? Going back 20 years, I'm I, I'm happy right now. Me and my lady out here, so it's good. Yo, yeah, yeah. It's you, you got a good relationship going on. That you know, yeah. you, that's good. she she supports you. That's all. That's, that's you, the first time yeah. in my life that she supports everything I do, and she's there yeah. by my side. She takes care of all my. Like she's my assistant. She does everything for me. You know, so it's yeah, amazing. Yeah, Storm has been so instrumental with uh, helping out uh, the show and just helping me get some stuff done for with Danny and stuff. Oh, that's so cool. She, she's she's at her sister's house right now. Her sister has lupus, so she's helping her sister right now. Yo, that's that was a real picture that you put up of her and her sister. I Which thought one? that was you. No, was real... that's her and sister. Brother, <laughs> fucking cuñado, we have to talk. Yo, the, 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 the sister looks like Lisa Bonet. I say it all the time. <laughs> Isaac laughs because I said, Yo. You guys, she be happy. She be happy. <laughs> That's fucked up, brother. You gotta fucking hook your homie up, brother. <laughs> That's bullshit. <laughs> oh, she, 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 she just smile when she sees us. Nah, brother, they're very pretty girls, man. Yeah, yeah, she, pretty she, she's only twenty-two. My my girl's twenty-seven, so they're five years apart. Right? What uh, like uh, other other wrestlers? Like uh, how about like me growing up? I I, I grew up on Roddy Piper, Bob Backlund, uh, the Ivan Pusky, stuff like that, and they're all all fucking great fucking wrestlers. I always bugged out. Yeah. You know what I mean, on, yeah. on, on watching those guys. You know what I mean. Like the, the who, of, like who was your favorite growing up? Seriously, like like but that you like like saw and was like, oh, I'm gonna try to be like that. They're like like help me. You mean the guy? There was one guy in Japan, the Great Muda. The oh, Great Muda, all right. And uh, the Road Warriors. Oh, I, love the Road, I got to see uh, what's yeah, that show that on? Was, yeah. What's that show on oh. Vice? That's out. That they did. They did an episode on the Road Warriors. It's fucking oh, Road great. Warriors, and, and, and uh, I, I I used to love Ultimate Warrior too when I was young. Oh, Ultimate Warrior, like, sick. Really? Yeah. No, uh, yeah. Roddy, Roddy Piper was. Oh, uh, hold on, hold on. Look, look. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> Yo, he, he, he in L.A. I did a GMS, the GMS party for uh, for uh, the, the 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 Fahrenheit 451 book, a GMS issue, and Roddy Piper came. That's sick. Damn. He, I, I met Roddy Piper, bro. His, oh, Roddy, his, Roddy. his kids, his his kids a fighter. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Roddy, Roddy used to uh, 
in, in WCW, Roddy, they, they, he used to babysit me. I used to travel with him and he used to teach me shit behind the scenes. Yeah. He he was so fucking cool to me. He was probably yeah. the coolest guy I met in the business. See, yeah. I'm sorry, but see, I, yeah. I, when I went up to him, when I, I, I spoke to him, he was really nice to me. You know, I, I, him and I, I, I talked to him one time. I was on a plane with Stone Cold Steve Austin, and That's awesome. and we and we were talking like no, normal. It was nice. Yeah, yeah. He, he's cool. He's he's fucking. He's the real deal. He's down to earth, brother. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, he's the real deal. He's, he's he's one of us. You know what I'm saying? Definitely. That's cool. See, that's that's real cool, yeah. man. That's awesome, Bro, man. But, 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 no, fuck wrestling. Tell me about this fucking sex and violence and the exploited and all that stuff. Where did that come from, brother? That was the greatest thing I've ever fucking heard. <laughs> all right, so, so, so the, the whole thing with that was sex and violence. I was doing a record with uh, Tim Armstrong. And, yeah, yeah. Uh, he did my whole record, uh, the, Internet, the, Inter, the International Hardcore Superstar, that whole record. And uh, I was talking to Tim. I said, yo, I, I love that song, Sex and Violence. Why, why don't we do it? So I was like... He's like, all right. Uh, he, uh, he, I, I was like, yo, I love to exploit it, right? I love, I want, so homeboy Lars called homeboy up. And he said, you can use it. But it was so funny, like him talking to Wiley, Wiley for exploiting it. And right. When I, me, when I see Wiley, he's like, what's up? And we, we should party, go crazy. And basically, we're on the phone. And it was like, Wiley speaking on the phone to me. And Lars, all three of us, and you couldn't understand me or couldn't understand what the fuck Wally was saying. <laughs> but somehow we got it. It was like, well, we're at, I, I, you know how he is? And I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And all of a sudden, he let us use it. Lars hooked that up, and I said, thank you, Wally. And we did it. And then I said, you know what? I'm going to get Everlast on it. And they got Tim Armstrong on it. So two guys that are friends of mine, yeah, but, but two, yeah. guys who are, who, both, two guys who are both amazing lyricists. And musicians and Grammy yeah. award winning artists. You know what I mean? That's sick, and yeah. I was like, how am I even on this record? But I, I wrote my shit right there. And then uh, Tim Armstrong did all the music. Uh, he did everything. You know what I mean? Man, He's a musical genius. He he was into that style of mixing beats with, with yeah. punk. Yes. In like the early to late nineties, he was before. Yeah, yeah. yeah, he was way ahead of the yeah, curve. Yeah. 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 Yes, yeah. Yes, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And. There was always, you know, you can you can tell. I love Lars. I love the whole yeah. band, right? Yeah, yeah. But you can, you can tell when Lars writes a song. Yeah, you know, you're gonna be on a Viking ship and you're gonna yeah. go fuck. Yeah, 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 yeah. The harmonies, you hear the, the the gang vocals. Yeah, that's Lars. Yeah. But when you hear Tim, there's he's got everything in there. You know, then, you know, you know what's crazy about Tim? It's like when you meet Tim, he looks like he can't walk and chew rubber gum. He's, he's like all fucking punk rock guy, but. He'll yeah. he'll be playing music and he'll be singing over here like this the microphone here and and and, 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 and but it's all one 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 point like he looks crazy but he's a fucking musical <laughs> genius a yeah. musical genius and a great guy with great heart. Yeah, we bonded in Japan. We I used to take him to the gym every day and yeah, you know it was good times, brother. It was good times. <laughs> it's good times, man. It's good well, times. I'm, I'm gonna listen. Man, Piro, I'm so happy that you did this. Thank you so much yeah, thank for being you. on here. Fucking out, Van Piro. Tell, before we yeah, let you go, man, tell every, tell all the listeners where we can find you online. Yes. Uh, pl plug the plug the movie one more time. Where can everybody order Nail in the Coffin? Um, we're actually gonna we'll be showing the trailer uh, as you're watching thank this. You. If you're watching the YouTube, yes. but but Van Piro, tell everybody where can they grab the movie? I know it's on uh, video on demand. There's a Blu-ray, but give everybody the the info, please. I don't really know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It's on every platform except Netflix. That okay. I know. It's uh, yeah, it's it on everywhere. Um, and they can good. have the DVD the blue, on, on the your blue, website, right? Yeah, the, the no, the DVD. No, it's right through Epic. Okay. Epic Films. Oh, yeah, right. they're, cool. Epic yeah, Films. yeah. So it's out. It, it came out today. It's out. Sick. Uh, but it's on every platform. I'm, I'm fucking geeked about it. You know, I'm yeah, blessed. I can't wait to watch it, man. The trailer is. It look was really sick, man. Uh, really interesting story about you and your daughter again i mean i know we touched it's about amazing, it in the beginning bro. but i'm thank I, it really looks really well done man i'm i'm excited to see it vampire i'm proud of you dude as a fan 
uh, who watched yeah. you in the ring, dude. It's cool to hear that you are doing better. I'm excited to see all the shit you have coming out, dude. If you need a hand with anything that me or Danny can help you with, dude, we, we have your back. Thank I appreciate you. We got you, we got you brother. We sure. got you. Uh, say the same. We're brothers now. We've always been, but yeah. you know, and same. If I can help you in any way, I'm out here in LA, but I come over there all the time. I'll be out there. I'll be out there like, soon. We're going to chill, yeah, me and you, bro. I love you, brother. When you're back out yeah, here, I love you too, and, man. And yeah. Mellow will have you in the studio. Uh, Danny and I usually do these in the studio. Uh, in the city, yeah. In the city, man. Yeah. So once shit gets back to normal, man, we'll have to have you out. And, and you know, yeah, when I come, we'll go, so, we'll go for a meal. We'll have some good food. Oh, we'll hang that. out, you know? Hell yeah. Debbie. Debbie. Debbie, my brother. All right, awesome, man. You know what I'm saying? Thank you, brother. Yo, yo, so, you, so brother. guys, that, that's a wrap for Corona Chronicles, episode number 11. I want to give a big shout out one more time to Vampiro for joining us. Yeah. Um, shout out to Ron for joining us. Um, and everybody, dude, please continue to sign up for the email list, the YouTube. The shit is popping. We, uh, me and yeah. Isaac appreciate uh, all the support so far, man. We this. Thank we, do, you, we don't have any sponsors, man. We do this shit for free so that you guys don't have to post no so no bullshit, none of that shit. Uh, so thank you so much. Thank you to all both of you guys. Uh, a lot of love. Uh, make sure you guys get your cameos from uh, Isaac too, right? Vampiro, I love you, brother. Vampiro, thank you love so you, much. Homie. All right, peace, guys.